Opposed to present. Commission opposed to color. Yes. Read that. Oh. My name is Jose Lopez. I am the Vice President of EASA. Please have a seat. Let's have a seat. Uh, I have the distinction of introducing our MC for the morning, Lourdes Duarte, who is not a stranger to EASA. I believe many years that she's been here with us. And I, I just, you know, there's no introduction. Everybody knows who she is. So I'll introduce her to you right now. Yeah, I, my name's Lourdes Duarte. I'm over at WGN TV, Channel 9. You all watch? Yes? Yeah. Okay, good. That's, that's what I go for, right? Um, so thank you so much for having me. I, I just thought of this, but so I've been at WGN for 10 years, and one of the first organizations that reached out to me um, to welcome me and to uh, help with different things that they were working on was IASE. So um, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. how, but as Latinos, we're actually running early. Which I don't know how that happened, but let's go with it. Let's see if we, we develop a new trend. Uh, I want to introduce to you the president, uh, the board president for IASE, Ivan Barajas. We're going to say a few words and then introduce our governor. Thank you, Lourdes. Buenos dias, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. So um, at first, we'd we'll like to go ahead and uh, again thank you, thank the Lord for allowing us to have 30 years of uh, yeah. of the asset existence. Thank you, Lord. And you know these these 30 years have um, have been challenging, but have, we've, we have learned and we have worked together and we continue to work. And I want to go ahead and recognize um, you know this for, for this year's conference our our executive board and our entire um, YASA board. So board members, if you could please stand up. So these are our board members, Sylvia Fonseca, 
Rosa, Edith, Tish, Bobby, Carmen, Evelyn, Alice, Nancy, Vanessa, Jose Lopez, our, our attorney, George, George. We have Carlos Charneco around here, Jose Prado. Thank you everyone for putting, helping us put this event together. And um, definitely a special thanks to Veronica Brand, who's in our office. So, so er earlier, the, earlier this year, um, Yasa, yes, yes, along with the Hispanic Illinois State Law Enforcement Association and the Illinois Latin Council on Higher Education, entered into a collaborative agreement with the Illinois Legislative Latino Caucus. You will find in your book that a copy of the agreement, we are moving to a higher level of accountability. We are, we are now just coming as one organization, but as four organizations with one common mission. When we, go, when we come knocking on doors to meet with state agencies, we are not coming alone. Your voices will be heard, your community will be heard, and the voices will be, will be heard very loud. I want to go ahead and make sure that um, I invite everyone to take advantage of our workshops that we have going on for today. And once again, we thank you and we'll see you, you know, during our lunch. Well, before we move on, I want to invite up is uh, Jose Alex Medina from Kingdom Council. He's going to do today's invocation. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Goodness, she's so tall and I'm so short. <laughs> well, good morning. What a pleasure, what an honor to be here before you. Uh, those of you sitting on my right and on my left, uh, it is an honor and a privilege to to be sitting here celebrating 30 years of the Illinois Association of Hispanic State Employees. What an accomplishment, huh? What an accomplishment. Come on. Come on, Latinos, cut loose. If not, go and get some coffee. So let us, if you wish to stand, please stand. If you wish to bow your head down, please do so. Uh, if you wish to remain sitting, you can do that as well. Uh, the Lord is good and that doesn't, uh, he doesn't get shocked by that. And uh, join me, join me. As we invoke the presence, the manifest presence of God, can we also connect with a couple of our employees, particularly from DCFS, who have uh, suffered uh, uh, tragedies, assaults. Uh, today is the one month uh, remembrance of uh, Hurricane Maria hitting the island of Puerto Rico. So let us connect with all of those uh, things that are happening in the land, causing suffering so that the presence of God will touch their hearts, even including us here and here, standing here to be healed and restored. So Father, it is a good day because this is the day that you have created. So we are pleased to be in your presence. Now I pray that your presence will manifest even as we speak, even as, as, as we hear one another, even as we encourage one another, even as we hear from Governor Rauner, who continues to lead this great state into the glory that has been bestowed by you upon the people and the inhabitants of the earth, Father. I pray in Jesus' mighty name that your kingdom would come, that the joy, the peace, and the righteousness that is in heaven will be replicated here on earth, in our hearts and in our minds, Father. I pray that the kingship of Jesus will be manifested through righteous laws, through righteous decrees, to equal access, to equal opportunity, not just for one group of people, but all group of people, Father. I ask in Jesus' name that the restoration in the land will take place, even as your spirit will come and be, and, and be, touched, uh, be touched the hearts of men and women in this great audience. I ask in Jesus' name that your spirit will continue leading the leadership of Iase, Father. And I ask for every single person standing, sitting down, or connecting with us, that you would encourage them, that you would release boldness, that you would increase wisdom, that you would increase influence and power, because at the end of the day, the people that we serve is the inhabitants, the, the children and the families here in this great state. Father God, I ask in Jesus' mighty name that you would increase their wisdom, that you would increase the influence, that you would increase the compassion, that you would increase the tenderness and the love in our hearts as we come together, as the Latino people come together, not believing that we are higher or lower, but that we are together as a family, Father God, that we would embrace one another in this great spirit of unity. And Father, I ask, finally, 
that your kingdom will come and that your will be done and that we as emissaries from heaven will replicate heaven, will cultivate heaven and will push heaven forth here in this land so that this land will be restored and that the great glory that God has bestowed upon it will shine through powerfully and beautifully so that other states around this nation, Father God, will also be healed and restored. And I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, and you mentioned Hurricane Maria, and I think it's also important to mention uh, it's been one month since the earthquake in Mexico City, too. Um, so we're still praying for, for all the families and all the people there as well. So thank you very much. Okay, so uh, before we move on, I've got a few people that we need to recognize. Janice Glenn with the Illinois Department of Human Rights, the director. Um, just wave hello. There you are. And then David Baldwin, the director of the Department of Corrections. Uh, you saw him sitting right here to my right. Hello, Governor. <laughs> uh, so let's give a big warm welcome to Governor Bruce Rauner. Good morning, buenos dias. Good morning. On behalf of the people of Illinois, it's an honor to join you again at this conference. I've joined you every year that I've been governor, and I will join you every year because my job is to work for you. And I'm here to say thank you. Muchas gracias, muchas, muchas gracias for your service to the people of Illinois. We all together have the privilege of serving the wonderful people of our state, and my job is to help you do your jobs even more effectively. And I'm committed to that every day. Now, I'm incredibly proud of the advocacy of IASE, this is a time to celebrate 30 years of progress. Let's have one more round of applause for 30 years. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Thank you for your advocacy. I am very proud of our Hispanic community in Illinois. We have one of the largest, most vibrant Hispanic communities anywhere in America. We have more than two million members of the Hispanic community here in the great state of Illinois. And Leaders in the Hispanic community are leaders in every aspect of the quality of life for the people of Illinois. In business, in law, in medicine, in, in the arts, in education, and especially in government and public service, working for the people of Illinois to create a better future for our children and our grandchildren. Thank you for your service. I am committed to enhancing the opportunities for Hispanic members of our community to serve the people of Illinois. I am deeply proud that we have, here in Illinois, the first Latina lieutenant governor in American history in Evelyn Sanguinetti. I am deeply proud that many members of our administration leading our departments, Jim Dimas, Matt Perez, and many others, are members of the Hispanic community. And let me be even more clear, since I became governor, we've changed the mix, improved the mix, the representation if the Hispanic community inside state government. We've added more than 2,000 new Hispanic public servants into state government than we had when I became governor. This is a big deal. This is a very big deal. Illinois is a great state. We are the greatest state in the greatest nation on earth, in large part because we are a state, we are a nation of immigrants. I am a strong advocate for immigration comprehensive immigration reform. We as a nation were built by people who've come here from around the world to seek freedom and opportunity and try to achieve the American dream for their families, for our children and our grandchildren. Together, we can enhance and improve immigration with comprehensive immigration reform. We can remain a welcoming state for those who would seek more opportunity here in Illinois. And we can work together to serve the people Together, we will make our government more efficient, more effective, more transparent. We can provide higher quality services to the people of Illinois at lower cost to taxpayers. Now, I was asked by uh, a woman here as I came in about opportunities for um, increase in compensation and the interest in getting more compensation in service to the people of Illinois. Some of you have noted uh, there hasn't been salary increases over the last few years. 
Obviously, we have a budget crisis. We're still running a $2 billion deficit. Irresponsible, fundamentally irresponsible. But I'm committed to getting more compensation for our state employees, and primarily based upon merit, based upon productivity, based upon work and achieving results for the people of Illinois. We can afford to pay more when we drive greater results, greater productivity. And I'm committed to doing that together with you, getting your ideas on how to increase the service levels and the productivity in our various departments. We can do this together. And when we do this, we can afford to pay more and compensate those who achieve these great results for the people. We all have the privilege, the privilege, it's not a right, it's not an obligation, it's a privilege to serve the people of Illinois. We do it together out of the goodness of our hearts. You are true public servants. Thank you for your service to our community, from every community in every neighborhood across the state of Illinois, but especially thank you for your advocacy for our Hispanic community. Uh, it's a wonderful community, and I'm deeply proud. We've been celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month in my administration across the state for weeks now, and this is the time to celebrate the 30th anniversary, listening, learning, working together working together to overcome our challenges, provide higher quality services at real value for taxpayers. We will achieve this, and then we will have a better future for all of our children and our grandchildren here in the state of Illinois. God bless you, thank you for your service. I look forward to working together and having another great 30 years of Yasi's great success. Thank you very much, everybody. Muchas gracias. Thank you to Governor Rauner for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. All right, so part of the reason why you're all here is the awards, right? Isn't that the best part of, of events like this? People, we get to recognize some of the wonderful work that so many Latinos are doing, so that's exactly what we're gonna do this morning. So let's begin with the Hilda Lopez Arce Heroin Award, Heroin Award, uh, which goes to uh, Virginia Martinez with the Illinois Prisoner Review Board. And let me tell you a little bit about her. She spent uh, most of her career working in nonprofit organizations, has been a strong advocate for Latinos, women, children, as well as the poor. While her detailed bio is in the program booklet that you can look at, I want to highlight some of her achievements. Uh, Virginia, along with uh, Viola Armijo, Rouse became the first Latina to be licensed to practice law in Illinois. Virginia was a founding mother of the DePaul University Latino Law Student Association, the Illinois Maternal and Child Health Coalition, and the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. Now, earlier in her career, she uh, had opened the Maldef uh, Midwest office as its first regional council. She served as legislative staff attorney in this Midwest office of the Mexican American Legal Defense and Educational Fund where she was uh, responsible for monitoring regional, state, and local leg legislation, as well as policy issues affecting Latinos in the 11 state Midwest region. She has done a lot. I can go on and on and read you all this stuff, which is wonderful uh, to highlight, but I want, you heard, I want you to hear from her specifically. Virginia Martinez from the Illinois Prisoner Review Board receives the Hilda Lopez Arce Heroin Award. I'm a giant. Thank you. I, I truly appreciate this award today. I've worked with so many of you in the past, both when I was at MALDEF, more recently when I was at the Latino Family Commission, and I continue to work with uh, many members of the IASE, um, and I totally, totally appreciate um, hearing from friends that uh, I'm on the right track, uh, that we're partners in the work that we do, and that understanding that we still have a long way to go. Thank you so much. And we appreciate your work, Virginia. Thank you for joining us today. Congratulations. Next up is the Government Service Award. This goes to a state representative who was born and raised in Aurora, graduated from East Aurora High School. Tom Yeah. <laughs> She became the first in her family to graduate college. 
with a bachelor's degree from the University of Illinois at Chicago. Linda was commissioned as a first lieutenant in the United States Army where she served for five years. She served as a second lieutenant and remained in the National Guard for an additional five years. She retired from the US Army and returned to civilian life. She knew she wanted to pursue her entrepreneurial creativity by opening coffee shops in Aurora. And although she faced struggles in the beginning, she became familiar with the WBDC, and today she has come full circle, has since worked with the WBDC to encourage programming in Aurora, and currently uses her platform in Illinois government to advance women-owned business and education. So let's give a big, nice welcome to Representative Linda Chapa Lavia. First of all, whenever we Wait, get an award, thank you. <laughs> whenever we get an award, because the, well, first of all, I want to thank my Creator God because with nothing, I have nothing without Him. Okay, period. And and we are very spiritual people. Period. Okay, and never hide that. As Christians, never hide how much you love Him because that's how we serve our people in the state because they see love through our eyes. Okay, you know that. And when I came in, you know the beautiful women in the room. I have to comment. All of you are beautiful, first of all, and handsome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. But rejoice when we get awards. Right. Wake up. Stand up. Acknowledge people that get awards because we work hard every day. And when it's your turn up here, you would expect the same for people down there. So give respect to people. It's very, very important. When before the governor left, I told him I loved him. You know, regardless of how we feel, he's a man. And in his position, he deserves respect. Yeah, that's a Democrat that's speaking right now. You should respect. And what we know biblically, everyone, is that God puts us into positions of power. And we're supposed to use those positions of power for the betterment, betterment of everybody, regardless of if they're a Democrat or Republican. When I, was, uh, when I was serving, I didn't think about what my friends next to me in the foxhole, if they're a Democrat, independent, what have you. I wore the, the banner, if you will, of this country, and I served regardless of who was next to me. I loved them. So try that on today. It's just love people no matter what, okay? In spite of ourselves. Because always remember, from the beginning, we're sinners, and we're no better than anyone else. And I am so extremely humbled to receive this award because you guys out there are the recipients of this award, not me. You do the hard work every day with not enough money, not enough people, not enough encouragement. And, and I want to tell you today, I love each and every one of you. And I'm proud of you. And I'm proud of all the work you've done in this state over the 15 years I've been elected. I am so impressed and so humbled and really not deserving of this award. You guys are. Every one of you here and all the work you put in and the days you miss with your kids and the, miss, the missed anniversaries you with your husbands and your spouses and your other halves. So I love each and every one of you and you make a difference in our life. You make a difference in our life. And you know, Representative Hernandez and Senator Castro and Aquino, Senator Aquino will say the same thing. It's we are just the faces, you guys are the work. You guys do the work behind the scenes that make us look good. So I want to thank you for this award, but it's your award, and I love you. Good morning, everybody out there. I can hear you. You're great, too. I love you. You guys have a great day today. Oh, so she just cheered me up. Good. I, like, I woke up this morning on the wrong side of the bed. I couldn't get my contacts in, and she just made me so much happier. Thank you. I love you. I love you more. Next up, we've got another community service award, which goes to a lady with a great name. Her name is Lourdes. Oh. <laughs> is that not wonderful? And she's got doctor in front of her name. Yes. All right. That made me happy. She, she she's not, okay. <laughs> uh, can I still recognize her in the work that yeah. she does? Okay, yeah. great. And can I accept her award since my name is Lourdes? Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. yes. Great. I'd love to get it from you. Uh, so <laughs> So this is for the Community Service Award by IASE. Her name is Dr. Lourdes Ferrer. She's an award-winning Hispanic academic achievement and parental involvement specialist who has developed numerous programs designed to increase all students' academic achievement. She is the author of the books, Hispanic Parental Involvement, 10 Competency Schools Must Teach Hispanic Parents. She also wrote, Sit in the Driver's Seat, the 10 Competencies to Drive Your Children to Academic Success also co-authored Voices, 
African American and Hispanic students' perceptions regarding the Hispanic parent involve academic achievement gap. So even though she's not here, a big, warm hello and congratulations to Dr. Lourdes Ferrer. All right, so congratulations to all the winners. I also want to recognize a, a few other people who are here. Um, legislators, uh, State Rep. Uh, Lisa Hernandez, Senator Omar Aquino. Yeah. It's always way in the night if you're in the crowd. And Senator Cristina Castro. All right, so. So part of the reason why you came here is um, to listen to this legislative forum by the Illinois Del Legislative Latino Caucus. And we've got uh, several representatives that are gonna be a part of this. Um, I'm told it's State Senators Martin Sandoval. Are they here? Okay. Uh, Cristina Castro, Omar Aquino, Representatives Lisa Hernandez, Linda Chapaladia, uh, Cynthia Soto, Silvana Tavares, and Teresa Ma. And Jorge Montes, who is the IACE Legal Counsel, is gonna moderate uh, this forum. He's the principal at Montes and Associates where his practice is focused on business law and clemency. Mr. Montes is a former chairman uh, of the Illinois Prisoner Review Board. He was appointed to that board by Governor Jim Edgar back in October of 1994, served as chairman from 2004 to August of 2010. So hello, and I know that you are taking over from here, right? Okay, come on up. And before I give you the microphone, um, I just want to say thank you again for having me be a part of the breakfast today. Uh, I do have to get going just because I have to get to work uh, this morning to get a few things done before the show, but uh, always a pleasure to see all of you and the wonderful work that you're doing. And please make sure you um, say hello, stop by, send me um, any information or stories that you think would be relevant, not just to the Latino community, but all of Illinois. Okay? Deal? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. How about a warmer round of applause for Ms. Duarte, who is very generous with the assay. Always makes time to be here every year, almost every year. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. And she does lovely work uh, at, at WGN. We watch you often. Thank you. You look good on TV. Thank you. Thank you. She looks better in real person, though. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take about a 10 minute break so we can set up. We'd like to welcome everybody. Uh, we'd like to encourage everybody who's in the hallway to make their way in because we're going to have the Latino uh, Legislative Forum in a few minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, we're delighted to hear, to see uh, with us, uh, as usual, some of our past presidents that are here. Would you kindly recognize some of our past presidents that are here with us today? We got Carmen Rance is on the floor right here, threatening to boycott somebody or other. Stand up. All right, this is her. It's Carmen Boycott Rance. Stand up. All right. She says the she says the governor is lucky that she didn't see him before she got here, because she was gonna boycott him too. All right. And then we got we got we got Ben Bonales, one of our veteran, not that he's that old, but he's our veteran presidents here. What, 1950, what was it? Oh, sorry, what was that? I thought it was 1950. Oh, you can't hear anymore, so good. All right, and we have uh, Peter Vigna, 1970 or something like that, yeah? <laughs> All right, die hard people, die hard people. Carlos Charneco, you were president too, weren't you? Carlos Charneco, the man that makes things happen, right here. And his twin Iase brother, Jose, Jose Lopez, right here. The people that are the backbone of the operation. Did I forget any of our past presidents, Sylvia? I think we got everybody, right? We're happy to see everybody here. Welcome to our annual legislative forum. We have some distinguished legislators to my left who will be given an opportunity to come up here for five minutes apiece and tell us where they're from and what they one accomplishment maybe did anybody accomplish anybody anything in Springfield this year? Well, anyway, one accomplishment that they're very proud of. One accomplishment, and then you got the rest of the, you got to come up here though because that that mic is only being used for recording. I think a can TV's here, so you got to step up. Stick my pen. Okay, all right. 
So ladies and gentlemen, if you could all simmer down, quiet. We're gonna, we wanna give our speakers uh, the respect that they deserve. You got five minutes then to come up and tell us where you're from and uh, one, one thing you're very proud of or the one big accomplishment in your area and what projects you have and then we're gonna grill you. Just kidding. I'm, I'm, de I'm delighted to be able to announce our first speaker, Lisa Hernandez from the, uh, what district is it? The 24th. The 24th district. How about a round of applause for her? <laughs> Representative Hernandez. Thank you, thank you, Jorge. I have to just before I, I, I go on on my little five minute, and I, I promise I won't go beyond that, I just want to thank Jorge for all his great work, and he conti continues to work on behalf of our community. Uh, very important um, uh, position he was in, the prison, chairman of the Prison Review Board, and continues to work with families on an expungement process. He is an institution to learn from. So thank you, Jorge, for all your work. Um, so quickly, uh, I represent the 24th District. Uh, the 24th District encompasses the Little Village area in Chicago. I go into Cicero, and that's where I live in Cicero. Uh, most of Berwyn, uh, a little piece of Stickney, a little piece of Riverside, and a, a, a chunk of Brookfield. So it's broad and it's it's different, you know. So I, I always say it's uh, two ends of the spectrum because I do have very uh, oh, well-to-do communities, and then I have very uh, impoverished communities as well. Um, a highlight of some of my work, I will say, look, um, I've done a few. Uh, I'll say many in the area of immigration. Um, yes. <laughs> I have been asked many times, why would I even um, try to, you know, go introduce these immigrant proposals? I think um, that we have a responsibility that those who are undocumented or are here um, uh, on a legal basis but limited to what they can do, all are human beings and have a right to a quality of life as well. Um, I, I really, yes. This is where the, the saying goes that you protect, government should protect those from who can at least, the least protect themselves. We are their voices and this is a, an example of just one of those. So um, I think the undocumented are extremely important in our communities, they are a part of what makes this country great. And you can't say that a family, it's in these days it's very mixed. So when you have a family who is document, you have a family that's undocumented, that undocumented individual does have a family member who is. So they count. All right. So my efforts uh, continue to uh, represent that community. That is a priority of mine, education, health care, and our, and these days, the budget, getting that budget passed. So I'm, I'm going to just leave you with a very strong and huge accomplishment this year in the midst of what we were in, and that was the Trust Act. I think we did a monumental um, piece of work there that where we thought we weren't going to get it done, it got done. So. Um, I'm going to leave you with that, an accomplishment. There's been some more. Um, and I hope to continue working with my colleagues and uh, meeting the successes for our communities. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, now you see, now you see why she is a very distinguished legislator. And we're very proud of her. And we're very proud of the things she's done. And I am a witness of the fact that she works day and night for the little people the people that don't have a voice otherwise. A lot of the undocumented people. She works, of course, primarily for, the, for, for, for voting citizens, but certainly she does not forget that there's this other underclass that we've created. Anyway, don't get me started. All right, we have Senator Omar Aquino who will then step up and tell us one significant accomplishment, tell us a little bit about his district. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, everyone. 
come on. That's like, that, this is the Yase. This is, uh, Latinos and Hispanics are in this room. Good morning. Good morning. There you go. You know what, it, it, the problem is that el café no es bustelo, so you know, it's, it's not as strong as we're sort of used to. Um, so I, it, this is my first year in office. I got in, thank, well, thank you. And my, and my biggest supporter here, Carmen Rance, who's a constituent of mine, uh, I serve as a senator in the, in the second district of Illinois, which uh, has a historical uh, context here um, with, with Hispanic representation. It was the first uh, elected position of, of a Hispanic individual of Miguel Del Valle who had to sue to have the map created back in the 80s and, and won successfully. And so I, after him came uh, Willie Delgado, so I stand in the shoes of, of some very um, uh, giants in our communities and I stand on the shoulders of giants rather. Um, you know, 30 years uh, ago, IASA was created to get representation within the state government to have make sure that our, our state employees looked and reflected like our communities. 30 years ago, I was also born. Um, so because I would say organizations like this, of leaders, as, as Representative Chapalavia in, indicated in her speech earlier, really the leaders in, in our communities are you all. You all do the work. We have titles that go in front of our names and that's great and whatnot. But without you all actually working with those constituents, our communities and so forth, we wouldn't have the, the, the resource and representation that's needed in each and every department that you all work in. So thank you for what you do. Um, An accomplishment, well, I, I wish I can say that uh, I can take credit for a budget. Uh, in my first year, there was actually a budget where two years prior there wasn't, but that was because of a lot of hard work from a lot of individuals up here and others um, that are not here today. But one of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm mostly proud of, of is a, a bill that had to do with uh, hate crime legislation. In this state, there was not hate crime legislation that had a, a, a civil penalty. So, um, especially unfortunately, in the, the climate that we, that we live in nowadays where it seems that even in the highest of positions in our, in, in our, in our country, you can have individuals that um, have hateful speech um, and that in some settings it seems that that's, it's being normalized. We in the state of Illinois, made sure, uh, myself and others, made sure that we are protecting people from, from, from bullies, that that is not okay, that hate is never okay based on race, religion, or anything, and that is not accepted in the state of Illinois. But um, that's a legislative thing that I'm proud of. I think I'm mostly proud because I'm, I'm, I hope that if you would ask all my colleagues uh, that if, if, if I'm their mentor, that each one of them would say yes. I, the most thing I'm proud of is that I, I listen. I'm, I'm very young. I'm the youngest to do my job. I'm the youngest ever to run for this position and win. And so because of that, um, I make sure to listen to, the, to, to, to leaders and to, to take on different perspectives. I have, I'm blessed to have many colleagues within the Latino caucus, both in the, both chambers and also just the Democratic caucus that I belong to in the Senate that have a lot of great um, uh, people to work with. But mostly it's, it's, again, listening to my community, listening to people like Carmen Rance and so forth, uh, to make sure that if I dare say that I'm going down to represent my community in Springfield and I don't listen to them, then I'm not doing my job right. And so um, there's, there was someone that came up to me earlier that wants to schedule a meeting to talk about issues within a certain department in the state. Please, any and all, I would love to sort of help because it, we can only see changes if we work together. So thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, he said something very interesting. He said 30 years ago, I think he was born. Did he say that? Yeah. Did you say that? That's really scary. Because I was just going to say, I remember 30 years ago when we had our first legislator in Springfield. I think it was uh, Berrios, right? Do you remember that? <laughs> was anybody here alive other than Chapa La Villa? <laughs> oh, oh uh, Senator Sandoval, of course. <laughs> Anyway, I better get in trouble. Am I, I better stop. Oh, no, yeah, you. No, I love you, remember? Yeah. <laughs> love she you. gave me a hard time in the legislature. That's why I had to get back at her. Chapa La Villa from, Bro. representative from the Aurora, <laughs> Aurora area. area. Good, good, good morning again. I love you guys. So you can tell I'm a character, right? 
I love my IDAT and my uh, DCFS and HFS and everybody, even the people that work with my seniors. Uh, I have been in legislature now for 15 years and I was the first elected, and no clapping because this is kind of sad, uh, I was the first elected Hispanic outside of Cook County 15 years ago ever in the state. No, please, I said no clapping and you're my friend, so stop it. That's sad because what we face in this booklet as far as numbers, we talked about this a little bit, you know, our numbers and the money and understaffed and overworked and underpaid. Uh, is because we don't have enough representation in the political world. And if we don't have enough, I'm gonna tell you what my professor said at Northern to me back in 84, 85. He took out the General Assembly handbook and, and Joe Berrios was in it. And, and he goes, okay kids, it was the Latino studies. I thought I was Latino at that time so I could be in that class and there's 25 people. I'm the only one from outside Chicago. And the only one that didn't speak Spanish fluently at that time. And they thought I was a weta weto and I am, I'm Tejana and I'm very weta weta weta. But I accept that and I love Marty Sandoval anyway. So, uh, it's, a, it's a different story. He made fun of me when I was first elected because I couldn't speak Spanish that well, right? Hi, Teresa, I love you. Did you sneak in? I love you. So, my professor Felix Padilla said, um, everybody find the Latino in this General Assembly handbook. And this was in 84, 85, okay? And we finally found the one, 118 state reps and 59 senators, we found the one and we all were happy, and he threw it on the ground. He goes, why are you cheering? Because in the year 2020, we will be the majority of this country, and if we don't have political force, we have nothing. So I'm gonna reiterate what he said, remember, when I was younger, is that we're, we sh we're shameful. I'm just as much at fault as anybody up here on the dais in this state, is that if we don't get active in electing other Latinos in positions, then we get what we get. Right now, we have just surpassed the African American community as far as population in the state of Illinois, and our numbers don't reflect. I, uh, we need our brothers and sisters on that side of the table too, but we need to make sure that we're representing the percentage of Latinos in the state that need to be represented. The thing I'm proudest of, and that comes from Senator Del Valle, because he's one of my mentors, so I, I, I'll leave him now and let him move out. So, as a state representative in Aurora, Illinois, Probably one of the things that I am the proudest of is the scratch off ticket for veterans. Being a veteran and being, um, being there 15 years, because the scratch off ticket, wait, 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 stop clapping again. It's all about you guys today. Is, is it something, the scratch off ticket, that money goes right to the veterans. There's no red tape. So there's actually Department of Veterans Affairs meets with quarterly with different veterans organizations and they, sh they shell out the money to organizations that are working with veterans. So that money outside of the lottery money uh, goes directly to veteran organizations and that makes me happy. And in 15 years, we've done a lot of legislation but that one, it keeps on giving. And I want to thank you and every one of you that buys a scratch-off ticket for the vet scratch-off ticket. That money goes directly to those veterans. There's no administration fee. There's nothing that is taken out by the state to do that in the sense of money that goes to other areas. It goes directly. And it's like a quarter of a million. It's not a lot of money, but it's enough money because you sit here because someone died to give you those rights. Okay, understand that. You sit here because someone died because our country is so great to move us forward. So, I love you. If there's ever anything I can do, and I always say this to everybody, my email is really easy. I have five, but don't make fun of me. It's lindachapalavia at AOL.com, because it'll be the last one standing to watch. And, and, and if, you t if you send me an email and you need something, it doesn't matter, even if I can do a ride along with you, okay? And I'm being serious back there, okay? Because I gotta feel what you're feeling in order for us to legislate for you. You can't assume that through osmosis, we know what the heck's going on in the state. Once again, earlier I said you guys make us look good, but also we need to make sure we know what's going on so we can work together to move the state forward. I love you. A round of applause for Representative Chapalavia. I didn't know she was uh, a veteran, and now that explains a lot, why she snaps orders and that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, do we have veterans here this morning? Can you stand up to be recognized? All our veterans, stand up. We want to recognize you for your service. Look at all these, look at all these veterans. That's amazing. God bless you. Thank you for your service. We love you. I'm starting to sound like Chapel La Vida now. We love you. We love you. <laughs> she sounds like Gal Franken, right? You remember on Saturday Night Live? Because I love you, because you're good. You remember that when he looked in the mirror? It's Chapel La Vida now. She should go on Saturday Night Live. All right. Senator uh, Cristina Castro speaking to people from outside the Chicago area who are Latino and proud Latinos 
who actually comes to our EASA conference. All right. Good morning, everyone. Come on, we're we, come on. Let's like, do we have enough coffee? Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. That sounds much better. Let's sound alive. Um, thank you all for having me. It's been an honor. Um, I was awarded a government service award that Linda Chapa received this this year, last year, and uh, this is my first term in the General Assembly. Um, and actually, Linda is the first state rep out of Chicago. I am the first state senator elected outside of Chicago. I actually represent the large city of Elgin, um, Carpentersville, uh, and half of Kane County, half of Cook County. Um, it's been a, a true honor to work with many of my colleagues here, um, state reps and senators, as we've looked forward and how we can help the Latino community, immigrant community, and we're still continuing to fight that fight down in Springfield. Um, you know, and I love how the not to pick on the governor and not to pick that we talked about immigration services and different things, but yet he cut a lot of lines um, out of the budget yep. uh, that we fully funded, uh, that we made sure balanced, and we will continue to fight when we go back down there to restore some of those fundings that are there. Yeah, so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it there in that, but um, as far as uh, what we're doing right now, I know Lisa Hernandez talked about uh, immigration, but we're also looking to protect our DACA students. Um, you know, as, as there has been some modifications to the Trust Act, um, and I know there's some bills that I am actually working with many of the advocates to help. Uh, many of them are frightened. Uh, we've met with a lot of them, and they're scared. They don't know what's going to happen. And the best we can do what we can as a state. Many of it's a, most of it's a federal issue, but we're trying to give them that support here as a state to help them do what they do best: go to school and provide. You know provide for our economy. They actually work just like everyone else and they, they pay taxes and they don't reap some of the benefits um, as others do. So uh, that's one of the things that we'll be working on uh, this upcoming session. But one of the things that I'm, I'm proudest of uh, is actually a bill that I passed, uh, my first bill, and that was signed by the governor, which would include uh, increase. Um, so DCO um, has edge tax credit, which was just recently re-upped by the governor. But there's also a minority component uh, that was put into the bill that helps our entrepreneurs, because Latinos are entrepreneurs. They, you know, create small businesses that, you know, if someone gets edge tax credit money, they have to, it's a voluntary report, put forth a report on goals, uh, increasing uh, minority diversification, uh, women's uh, own business, um, veterans, and the hope is that they connect these groups, can go out and reach out and get the report from DCO, and they can make partnerships with many of the corporations and businesses. And so that way, we all help each other, right? We all help our small and medium uh, businesses grow and um, succeed. So that's one of the uh, bills that I'm proud of. But the, the nice thing that I'm really proud is I'm proud of serving with these folks here on, on, the, on the panel. Uh, we work very hard, and we will continue to fight and do what we need to do to move us forward and to protect all of you as we look at different things that come up um, that will hurt, impact all of you. We will continue to fight to do that um, and you know, not to show the governor uh, <clears throat> any no love, but some of the things that he has been doing uh, to hurt our state employees and we will continue to fight um, to continue to protect you. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, Senator. So for those of you who thought that the legislature had done nothing this year, <laughs> there may be some out there, uh, the, you should know that one of the most, nobody's mentioned it yet, I don't think, but one of the biggest accomplishments, hi, Emma, is Emma Lozano. How about a round of applause for Emma Lozano? All right, well, Emma Lozano is in the room. <laughs> All right, so one of the greatest accomplishments was that they passed uh, the, whatever it's called, the act making Illinois a sanctuary state. Yeah, trust act. Trust act. Did you mention that? Yeah. Well, I was busy over here. But listen, you don't realize how it, it comes into play, but listen to this. So last, this week we had somebody come into our office who had been, a trucker who had been stopped for uh, driving on a revoked license because he didn't have a license for whatever reason. And I got to see as how, how he stood there crying because he's got a family. He's got, he's got three kids, he's got a wife, and he's afraid he's gonna have to go do 30 days in jail, and he was afraid of being deported. We said, well, if things work as they should, he lives out in the Burbs, the, in the Bolingbrook area, if things work as they should, once you finish with those 30 days, you shouldn't be deported. Yeah, thanks to the act that the, these fine people helped to pass. How about another round of applause? 
So some years ago, I was getting all this junk mail, and and we'd seeing all these people running for the water reclamation pool of district. And there was this man plastered all over. It wasn't junk mail. I'm sorry. It was of, of pamphlets. <laughs> And so, and you'd see Senator Sandoval's image on there. I said, who's this newcomer? Who's this new man, the new guy on the scene? Well, he's very aggressive, and he was, he made it to the, you were there, right? He made it to the Water Reclamation District, and he served some terms there. I don't remember how many. And he moved on then to the Senate. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll give you Martin Sandoval. A round of applause. Buenos dias. Buenos días. Ya, ya desayunaron, ya tomaron su cafecito, ¿verdad? It's great to be with you here this morning. My name is Marty Sandoval. I'm your senator for the 11th Senate District. That's the southwest side of Chicago and nearby West Cook. Includes Cicero, Borough, and Stickney and some other uh, suburbs on the West Cook area. I stand here to you today in, uh, and I want to thank all of you for your commitment to public service. You are the heroes in our community. You are the unsung heroes in the Latino community because you are, you've decided to take, to make a commitment to serve the people of Illinois and to serve it with a lot of honor and with a lot of grace. And you could have done a lot of other things in your life, but you chose public service. And not many people choose public service. Because the millennials, or even our Latino millennials at all our university campus, they choose to make money. And it's very rare that you hear them talking about public service. I want to thank Yase and all of you who have chosen public service and uh, have chosen to serve the Latino community here in Illinois. Don't give yourself a round of applause. I come here this morning to give respect to IASE and the public servants in the 30-year history that it represents. Um, just this past year, and when I and Fred Crespo were chosen by our colleagues to be the co-chairs of the Latino Caucus, I immediately turned to IASE. I immediately turned to IASE to look for a partnership in leading the new charge and representing Latinos in the Illinois General Assembly. I also reached out to uh, Ilache. I also reached out to Hislea. And uh, it was interesting. Um, it, it was very rare, uh, the number of meetings that Fred and I held with these three Hispanic public serving associations. And it, it it was very evident that there needed to be a partnership. And uh, you may see in the back a document that reflects for the a historic document. Never before in the history of Illinois and in the 30 year history of IASE had the Illinois General Assembly or the, the 15 year history of the Latino Caucus ever had entered into a formal partnership with Iase, Hislea, and Ilache. And so one of my proudest accomplishments is to be able to bridge the gap and bring all of you together along with the Latino Caucus in unison and in unity under one partnership agreement. And I want to give thanks to uh, uh, Carlos Charneco. Let's give a round for Carlos Charneco. I want, to, I want to give a shout out to Ivan Barajas, the president of IASE. Where's Ivan? Ivan? Ivan Barajas. Un aplauso para Ivan Barajas. And to IASE and to uh, Ilache, the educators of our uh, institutions, the Hispanic educators of our institutions, and the, uh, and the law enforcement, Latino law enforcement officers of our uh, state. Where are you, the Latino law enforcement officers? Want to stand up, please? These are people who are protecting us on the streets. Un aplauso for the law enforcement officers. 
I'll be brief. Es un orgullo ser producto de la inmigración ilegal de México. Yo soy producto de la inmigración ilegal de México. Mis padres cruzaron el charco en 1959 y llegaron a la tierra prometida, Chicago, de Michoacán y de Guanajuato. Y con mucho orgullo y con mucha honra, soy mexicano-americano aquí en Estados Unidos. This is a great country. This is a great country, and this is a country that has given most of us, all of us, more than what our motherland was ever able to give us. And we should be proud of that. And we are at the, f at the doorstep of something that's very, very great and powerful. But we must prepare ourselves. Just this week, last week, there was a study that came out from the University of Illinois. It was not a very promising study. It talked about the growth of the Latino community and its significance of the Latino community, yet it shows where we are falling behind. Significant, significant drop-offs in a lot of categories, whether it be in education, housing, whether it be in economic development, whether it be in entrepreneurship, Every, in every single category, we are uh, falling behind. I think that we all uh, have a great challenge. We must, we must prepare ourselves uh, for tomorrow. And I think part of our responsibility at the state level is to uh, work with you in unison in preparing for the future. It sounds uh, kind of rhetorical and it sounds kind of like cliche-ish, but we need to start digging deeper. Even in light of the current president that we have today, and in light of the current governor, we should not be blaming the president and we should not be blaming the governor, but we should be blaming ourselves because we must take up the fight. You know, over the last 10 years, even without a Republican governor or without a Republican president, we have not made the gains necessary in regards to funding MAP, in regards to providing economic opportunity, in regards to finding uh, opportunities for small businesses in our community, in regards to providing the net for the Latino community. I, we get, you know, I get very critical, and I like to be critical of my own party, because I think that's important. I think that's important. I remind you also that in the Latino population in Illinois of the nearly over two million Latinos, less than one percent are undocumented. We will continue to fight for the undocumented population of Illinois. Lo vivo en carne propia. And we've done that over the last 15 years. And our record is very clear. All the legislation that we have done over the last 15 years, because the United States federal government and our Congress has failed our community, we, the Latino caucus, have taken up to be the vanguard and the protection of the undocumented. The record is clear. I, won't def I, I don't need to defend that. And we will continue to do that. But we must also think about you know, the greater Latino population, which is documented. These are 99.9% these are of the population of the Latino community. Right? We must think about MAP. Right? We must think about supplier diversity programs, and for God's sake, we must think about hiring more Latinos. We must think about promoting more Latinos. We must think about, you know, appointing more Latinos. We must focus. We must focus on the reason why our parents came to this country. They came to earn the American dream. They came for a job. They came to own a home. They came to live in a safe environment. And they came to be able to retire in a very satisfactory way. 
those, that's the American dream. Mm -hmm. Help me, help the Latino caucus focus on fighting for the American dream in Illinois. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Senator Sandoval. As you can see, the senator does not mince words. He's laid out uh, the responsibility that you and I have uh, to make things better and not just blame some of the president or the governor, et cetera. Very nice. Thank you. We pledge to work with the Latino caucus. If they pledge to work with IASE, we will do a great job. How about a round of applause for this new partnership? Indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a fresh face in the uh, Pilsen area these days, and everybody is talking about it and talking about her, and uh, there's great excitement in the air. We have Representative Teresa Ma, who is with us this morning. Would you come forward? An, an honorary Latina. Yeah. Um. Good morning, everyone. Buenos dias. My name is Teresa Ma. I represent Illinois' second district, which is just west of here. It includes the neighborhoods of Pilsen, Chinatown, Bridgeport, McKinley Park, a little bit of Back of the Yards, and Brighton Park. Um, it is a very diverse district. It is uh, slightly over 50% Latino, uh, about 25% Asian, 20% white. Um, I am a proud member of the Latino Caucus, and I have been very um, enthusiastic about uh, supporting all the issues that affect Latinos in the state. Um, I had a very active uh, first session. You know, this is my first term, but you know, I wanted to hit the ground running. I worked on uh, a number of bills that uh, have a direct impact on, on many of you and the Latino community, including um, a bill that affects um, the Department of Human Services and requires the uh, standardization of the data that's collected in all the divisions of the department so that we can know, um, you know, who the clients are, you know, whether uh, the state is doing its job in making sure that our state agencies serve the populations that reside in the state of Illinois. Uh, I also was successful in passing um, a bill that requires the governor to reestablish the language access task force which um, I had worked on when I worked for uh, Governor Quinn. I was uh, on Governor Quinn's staff and I uh, have a long history working in state government with many of you. Um, I have been proud to uh, have attended other IASA conferences in the past, so even though I'm fresh face in my district as an elected official, um, I've been very active. I worked with uh, Carlos and many of the leadership here uh, to present at previous IASA conferences, and so, you know, I'm very committed to supporting issues of uh, Latino state employees, and uh, I think that we can only be stronger if we work together and figure out, you know, what kinds of issues affect you that we can advocate on. Um, I was also a proud co-sponsor of legislation, immigration rights legislation, such as the Trust Act and uh, other pieces of legislation that you know, I'm very proud to be an advocate uh, for. And so, you know, I'm, I'm really glad to be here and to see all of you and to continue the work that, you know, I started several years ago uh, working on the Hispanic Employment Plan and the Asian American Employment Plan, you know, making sure that we can achieve equity and uh, diversity and have everything that, um, you know, we need as state employees to serve the people of Illinois. So thank you very much, and I hope you have a great conference today. Thank you very much, Representative Ma. We're uh, grateful that you made time to be here this morning with us. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Blanca Vargas in the house, right? Stand up, Blanca, Blanca. Blanca is very special, as you know. We love Blanca, and we have to give her special recognition. It has nothing to do with your age or anything like that. It just just because it's you. All right. <laughs> Linda says there's no love. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have a question here. See, did you notice what the, what the I was going to say politicians, what the legislative officials here, what they did? They took all our time and left us no time for grilling them. That's a strategy. They, they do that on purpose. All right, but we do, we will sneak one, one question from Carlos. Well, first of all, I mean, usually when we have these sessions with the legislators, we allow the 
people to ask questions. But I wanted to point out one thing, that, that we at Ayase um, receive the complaints. You are the voice of what goes on in state agency from office to office, and we know the complaints that we receive. So just as a perspective for our legislator who already knows some of these, the complaints we hear is la falta de respeto in the workplace about our Latino workers. Do we have complaints about bullying in the workplace against Latinos? Yes. Huh? And you've called us about that. Do you have complaints that you're told you can't speak Spanish in the workplace? I don't, what? Yeah? We told, we're told you can't get bilingual pay, right? We're told you may speak Spanish, you can't speak Spanish while you're working because we don't want to give you the extra pay. Right? The complaints. We have people in offices where there are not enough bilingual staff and people don't get service. Is that right? Is that the complaint? We have our DCFS employees as well as our DHS employees carrying how many? Too much what? Right. Who's, so these are the things that I think that, I mean, these are the questions, these are the issues uh, that we bring to the legislators and to the directors of those agencies. Uh, take charge of, of, you're the voice. You're gonna tell us what's going on. We're gonna relay that to the legislators. We have agencies who overlook Latinos in promoting them, especially in management. Am I right about that? Huh? I have a hard time finding Latino managers, only 242 out of the 2,000. We've had people who served as, la any managers here stand up, because you have fought the good fight, managers here. Any managers stand up? Not a lot, right? Anastasia over there, over at the Broadway DHS, is another one over there, great. Over there in Peoria, one of a few Latina managers there, right? Another one, right? We got sometimes a manager who worked 25 plus years and gets overlooked to be a regional manager and is overlooked by somebody who's only been with the, in that business in state government for a few years. That's absolutely ridiculous, all right? Raise your hand if you have another complaint. Who's got a complaint? You got right back there. So, shall we let the uh, legislator answer? A any, yes. Yeah, Ruben. Oh, I got a complaint, but I'll need a microphone so you can all hear. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, let's That's how the legislator. You see, uh, so we got it all in in one question here, all the complaints that we have, and we're going to have Representative uh, Hernandez come up and address some of these issues. I have one more to add to that list, and I think you all are gonna agree on this. Some of these complaints that have been proposed right now are not new. And I would have to say some of you are probably sitting thinking, we already have um, proposed these complaints to the caucus, so what have you been doing about it? Am I right? I have a proposal to give you, and that is, these are all complaints, and I have to tell you that as a caucus, we do have to come together in trying to prioritize some of the um, issues that come about, and if we have some uh, solutions through legislation, obviously we're there to propose that. But what I'm going to ask, probably as a new, piece, and maybe a new component, if you're not doing already this, that these complaints, I'm asking if they can be converted into a piece of legislation. So if you're going to propose complaints, what is the solution? What is it that we have to do? Because then what we do is we take a look at that proposal and we either, if we have to tweak it, talk it over, uh, enhance it further, that's the, I have to ask you, that's the kind of help we're gonna need from you. We, we welcome the complaints, 
but we need you also to give us some resolve to it. And so that is a mechanism of how we can move ahead. Not only propose the complaint, but what we can also do to, to resolve it and take it from there. As a start, this is just a start. So I don't mean to speak for the representative, but she didn't say this, I'm saying this, we're good at whining, but why don't we convert that into something productive and why don't we propose legislation and why don't we send it to Senator Sandoval to maybe you know pick up on it and then they could do some legislation. Does that make sense? Would some, uh, Senator, would you like to address that as well? In three minutes? So I had Sonia right about that. Get involved, Sonia said. You know, I was just uh, conversing with Representative Ma in, in 2003, one of the first bills that I sponsored with uh, former President Barack Obama was Senate Bill 60, 679, and that's, that prohibits employers from disallowing employees from speaking their native language in the workplace. 2003. So many of these complaints have already been addressed by laws and statutes that have not been enforced, right? That also, many of these complaints that necessarily don't come to the forefront because of uh, perhaps reciprocity or retribution from your employer, so you choose not to. And you know, we as Latinos generally tend not to try, tend not to want to bring things up to management because we, we don't want problems. It's generally our nature. Um, I think that's why this agreement, for the first time, IASE and the Latino Caucus have now entered into a partnership where we, can, we have to stop treating each other, as I say, como las novias del rancho. You know how the novias del rancho, when you, back in the day when you meet a young lady in el pueblo, in el ranchito, you would, because you, your parents wouldn't allow you to, to come together, you would just show up in la plaza and you would just kind of wave at each other. Ni andar con la manita sudada, because that was prohibited. So, for 15 years, Iyase and the Latino Caucus have been como las novias del rancho. We've just been waving at each other. And we need, Representative Hernandez, you're right. We need to, con we need to now enter into a collaborative, working partnership with uh, a strategic plan has assignments, but this requires people to be involved. That's another challenge to get, right Sonia? To get people involved. Es bonito y fácil criticar. You just said that. But it's very difficult to put your own time and effort to solving the solution, and it takes consistency. John F. Kennedy says, not ask what your country can do for you, but what you are going to do for your country. Don't ask what Illinois or the state is going to do for you, but what you're going to do for Illinois, join us. Join us, get involved significantly in the ASE, mm -hmm. and let's come together and form a strategic plan and an action plan. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the conclusion of this forum because uh, I think we're, we've run out of time. Now there are cynics in the room. There are cynics in the room who think that we have a huge show of attendance of legislators because they're running for something. But that's not true. I'll have you know. Nobody's running for anything here, right? They're here because it's a new day for Yase. It's a new day for Illinois. It's a new day for the legislature. Everybody cares. We're coalescing. These are bad times for minority communities in our country, and we're coming together to do something about it. How about that? How about a round of applause for all our legislators that took the time to be here, made time to be here. We appreciate all of you coming. And with that, we're going to ask the color guard to come forward. Don't forget to go to the, all the workshops. Don't forget the, the baile tonight, which proceeds for the Puerto Rico-Mexico uh, relief effort. Hilda is going to hound you to buy tickets, right? Hilda, right there, Hilda. All right, don't forget. And 
You should know that uh, legislators have uh, committed to sticking around if you have anything to ask the legislators. Uh, uh, Representative Hernandez just told me that they're going to be around to take your questions, okay? Why don't we all stand as we uh, allow the color guard to come in. Granted. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you at the lunch hour. The legislators will be sticking around to answer your questions and take your contribution. Just kidding. <laughs>